Howdy, my name is Caldwell Shine, and welcome to this edition of Ask a Developer. Our first question is from Blair. Blair asks, how do beacons work? Well, first, let's define what a beacon is. A beacon is generally a small, low-powered device that will often fit in the palm of your hand that emits unique information, usually via Bluetooth LE. You have to have something that's listening for Bluetooth LE, such as a Nexus 5 or an iPhone 5S, and then once that phone, for example, receives that information, the phone will communicate with the cloud. The cloud will then send information back to the phone about that beacon, and then the user can be notified, usually via an audible alert, a visual alert, or a vibration. Retailers can use beacons to more deeply connect with their customers. Here's an example. So let's say a retailer of a snowboard shop takes a bunch of beacons and they decide to install them in various areas of their store. The retailer might install them near where the boards are, where the goggles are, also where the music is located, and also maybe where the tuning products are located. Well, then the next thing what I have to do as a customer is install the app of the retailer. Once I've done that, I can go about my business. When I come near the board section, there'll be a beacon there, and the beacon's going to be emitting all of that good Bluetooth low energy. My phone is going to detect that, and it's going to send that unique ID up to the cloud, and the server's going to know that I'm standing right next to the snowboards. The server might then send a piece of information to my phone that says, hey, the snowboards are on sale for 50% off. This model that I've described depicts a fundamental shift in how retailers can interact with their customers. Our next question is from Ryan. Ryan asks, where are mobile fingerprint scanners heading? Well, that's a great question. Apple sure did something interesting with the introduction of the fingerprint scanner on the iPhone 5S. What I potentially think is most interesting about this is that in the future, we as users may be able to say goodbye to passwords as we know it today. But before we talk a little bit more about that, let's put our engineering hats on. There's two things we have to consider as engineers. One, these mobile devices that we carry around in our pocket are inherently insecure. The reason why is because we're not keeping them locked behind a door with access cards, for example, like what we do with servers. The second thing is, is that we as people sometimes misplace our devices. That means that other people could potentially gain access to our device and thus access the data on the device. So, one of the things that fingerprint scanners can help us to do is to potentially better encrypt the information that's stored on our mobile devices. A fingerprint is considered fairly unique and also complex and makes a great seed for cryptographic operations that developers can make use of in order to store information on the phone. In the future, I'd like to see Apple more deeply open up their API to the fingerprint scanner so that developers can make use of it. I'd also like to see Google improve how developers interact with the key store. Currently on Android devices, if you use the key store, sometimes you have to ask the user to enter in a system-wide pin code that may not be the best user experience. It's still not certain what the password of the future may be, but we know for sure that in the future, users are going to find different ways to identify themselves to various pieces of technology. That's all for this edition of Ask a Developer. Tweet your questions over to hashtag AskADev or leave them in the comments below.